So today I had to uh, drive into town and I thought I'd use the time to call my dear sister up in Dublin because uh, I'm useless to call my family generally, so that's a good time to do it when I'm in the car. So um, I was calling away, the no number was ringing away, and then it got through, but there was nothing on the far side. I said, hello? 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 And then I was just muffling, and just, the phone was getting passed, and then, then my sister answered, hello? Uh, I said, hi, hi, Norma, this is what about here. I said, oh, hi, sorry, yeah. uh, Katie answered the phone, but she gets so excited answering the phone that she, that's her daughter, by the way, so my niece. Uh, she gets so excited, she, when she, she hears the phone ringing, she really wants to answer the phone, she answers the phone, then when she picks it up, she doesn't know what to say, and just kind of stands there frozen. <laughs> so, Katie had answered the phone. Katie, Katie's a little star, she's absolutely fantastic. When Katie was younger, her favourite word was, adventure, adventure. So whenever I'd come over, we'd have an, an adventure out in the lawn, which meant adventure. And her favourite cartoon was Doa Sploa, which I learned afterwards. Uh, it's not called Doa Sploa, but it's actually called Dora the Explorer. Uh, so a Doa Sploa was, was very, we used to have our kind of Doa Sploa uh, adventures out in the lawn uh, whenever, whenever I'd go visit. It was, it was great fun. Uh, but it just reminds me of this tendency. Often it's, it's, it's very interesting to see what you can learn about human psychology from looking at children and then apply the same kind of thing to what we, uh, do we as adults do because we always think we're so different. We're not. Right? So like here, here, you, here you have Katie going for the phone because the phone is ringing, chances the phone and then just has no idea what to do or say. And so often in, in our lives and also in, in our faith, there are things that we, we want and then when we get them, we don't know what to do with them. You know, you're maybe striving for some sort of a goal. Uh, if you think like in the secular world, when you strive for some sort of a success and then you get there, you know, you win the title or you get the contract or you marry that person and now that you're there, well, now what? Uh, you often see like when people in, in, in the sporting field uh, sporting field, pardon the pun, uh, in the area of sport, when they um, win the title, they've always wanted, right? It's like, well, I'm, I'm only 35, like, I'm, am I supposed to retire now, or what, I suppose I'll, I'll start a charity, I don't know, I, what do you do, like, because you, you've, this, all, this, was the, this has been the focus for so long, and especially, like, a genie, you think of Olympic athletes, like, uh, you don't get into the Olympics like after four years of practice. Like you'd be practicing for maybe like three sets of Olympics, maybe 10, 12 years before you are going to be anywhere near world class level just to qualify. Uh, it, like it, the dedication it takes, that, that you have to be so single minded to get it. And then, but then if you do, say you do win silver or gold, then what? You've got this thing that you always want, that you've worked out. Like, Bled blood, sweat, and tears to get. Now you've got it, and, and, and now what? So it's interesting to, to look at how we as adults do very similar things to the children. When we think of our faith, thank God, thankfully, more or less, um, people still want the sacraments. It needs work, but we won't go into that now. Um, people still want their, their children baptized. Uh, there's people still want to get married in church, more or less. Uh, it's still the most common way, anyway, of, of, of getting married. Um, so it, this is good. <laughs> okay, as I say, it needs work. It needs better preparation, but we, we'll fix that some other time. Um, uh, so, okay, so you, so you get married or you get the child baptized. And, and now what? More often than not, attaining what we've always wanted uh, has more responsibility or more kind of negative consequences, dare I say, and probably more cons positive consequences than we realized. Okay, say you win a medal or something like that. You're now suddenly famous. Maybe you actually had no intention of being famous. You just wanted to you know, be the best at something. But now everywhere you go, people know your name. Again, pros and cons. You now have a public persona to maintain, like, uh, if, if, if you get caught speeding, it's going to make the papers because you're famous. So uh, pros and cons, pros and cons. I, say that, that there, there are, uh, I don't want to say negative necessarily, but, but mm, slightly heavier sides and positive sides to attaining this goal. Okay, so when we think of our sacraments, when you receive this incredible grace of being now you know, brought into the mystical body of Christ, 
I don't want to call it a, a negative cycle. It's not negative, but there's a responsibility here. There's a, a, a weight, if you want to call it that. Um, it's like a, a sweet yoke, if we can call it that. It, it, you, have, you now have a responsibility before God. You've received a treasure. What are you going to do with it? You've received this grace. Uh, when we receive Holy Communion, you've now received this, especially for us these days, in days of lockdown, uh, you've received this incredible grace. What are you going to do with it? Or when you're married, you receive the sacramental grace and you've been entrusted with another person. You know, if you're a husband, you've been entrusted with your wife who you now have to protect and honor and love and cherish and vice versa. So what, what are you going to do with this, with, this, with this person, with this treasure that you love? There's, there's a, 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 again, it's not a, it's not a negative side, but it's a, there's a, a kind of a weight of responsibility. You're not a child anymore. You can't act like a child. You can't just kind of be flippant about your responsibilities. You have to take this thing seriously. Now, there's obviously the, the beautiful side of it as well, you know, having a, a, a companion or having someone to speak to and being understood or, uh, again, if, if you're a public persona, a public person, uh, sorry, if you have a persona that's, that's well known, if you're famous, you can use that for good. You can stand up for the rights of those whose rights are deprived of them, whatever that may be. Uh, Again, we won't get lost in how that can be misused today. But um, there's, the, there's, a, there's a weight to receiving these kind of graces and gifts from God. This is, a, this is a good thing because the alternative is do nothing of value. Do nothing of worth. Do nothing that requires you growing up. Do nothing that requires you assuming any responsibility, which means don't make a difference. I don't think that's anyone's goal, just to get through life and just do nothing. But the, 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 the role then of, of striving and making an effort and bleeding for something, this is definitely worth doing, but we shouldn't be blind to the fact that our faith requires something of us. While yes, these are free gifts, you know, grace is always free. Unlike if you may ever, ever make a deal with the other side or, you know, if, if there's ever kind of an evil influence or a, a spiritual influence from, from the devil's side, yes, he may grant you certain, I don't want to call them graces, but wishes, desires, yes, but you always pay for them. If, if, the, if the enemy grants you something, you pay for it a hundredfold. If God gives you something, you get it for free. So you get, you get these, these, these incredible gifts for free, but, but there is a responsibility on us. There is a... a, a a weight associated with it, but then would we have it any other way? If you think, as I say, if you think about marriage, like the, the, yes, there are challenges in it, but you look at this beautiful person that God has entrusted to you, and yes, it can be difficult. Would you have it any other way? Would you just, would you just walk away, live like a teenager, as if that's fulfilling? So our faith today talks about uh, our first reading. It talks about Stephen, who's about to be martyred. He's about to be martyred for his faith. He's, he's been accused in the wrong. The guy is innocent. And now they're plotting against him and they say, oh, he's, uh, he's been making speeches against this holy place and against the law. We heard him say that Jesus the Nazarene is going to destroy this place and alter the traditions that Moses hand down, handed down to us. All made up. So he's innocent. Now we know uh, that he, he will be killed. We'll read it tomorrow. Spoiler alert, sorry. Uh, hopefully you're regular mass attenders and you knew how that story went anyway but so tomorrow he's going to be martyred uh, so at times there is a a bit of a again a weight associated with our faith so if you don't want that faith that's fine walk away <laughs> walk away but don't be blind to the fact that when we walk with Christ we have every grace and blessing that we need but the cross will not be absent from our lives that's the reality. The, the challenge is difficult, and especially today, misunderstandings and the fact that our, our faith is now becoming less and less politically correct. Uh, it's going to be a challenge to walk with Christ. So you can walk away if you wish. There, there, are, there are consequences to not having him in your life, but he's not chaining anyone into the church. So we have a choice. We follow the Lord, not, not blindly. We follow him knowingly. 
lovingly and willing to take on us, to take on our, upon ourselves whatever difficulty or cross might come our way. And it may be health, it might be a difficult family relationship, it might be financial, uh, it might be misunderstandings, it might be the demands of, of, of illness, a sick child, whatever it may be, difficulties may come our way. But with the Lord, we are never outnumbered. And with the graces that he gives us for whatever our vocation is, we will never be overwhelmed. Never. And so we ask the Lord today to renew our faith also in, in, our, in its challenges, in its demands. And I use that word, I know it's, it's not exactly appropriate, but in what the faith requires of us. That we might give to the Lord, give generously as he has given so, so generously to us. Amen.